I still don't know if you're on if you are online. Okay. C'è l'audio? What? Yeah, I think we're back, right? Yeah, we're now back on uh, Motorino nice. Snow Park. We are. Sorry, guys, a bit in delay. Just okay. A tiny little bit, the second and third for women qualification into the Big Air Junior World Championship here in Motorino Snow Park Livigno. Okay, we just saw Eli Bouchard dropping in for his first run. We're going to have the men heat two and three qualification for the men's Big Air. And Eli Bouchard just putting down that first Backside 1260, absolutely perfect right there. Weather condition is still very tough, but next up giving it a crack is Rocco Jamison going for a frontside 14 with the Indy grab as well. Oh my goodness, the weather doesn't seem to affect these first two riders at all. Rocco putting down a perfect frontside 14. We, we're having a bit of a tough t tough time with the wind blowing a bit faster than this oh. morning, but we try to give it up for the first round of the heat number two and three. Now on course from New Zealand, Maze Brown Sima. Here we go, Chama getting ready, dropping in switch. Probably gonna go for a cap double 12. Ooh, camera gets the focus. Oh, going for the cap double 14. I haven't seen him put that one down actually. I think that's a recent new learn for Chema Mazet Brown putting it down in round number one already killing it right now. Love to see all these different nations out here in today's qualification. Canada, America, New Zealand, from all over the world. The youngsters have come here to Send it in Motolino Snow Park. Now on to the Ukrainian Lukin Dmitro dropping in his first run. All right, Dmitro looking to put something down here in his first attempt of two, going backside. Oh, backside double 12, but just a little bit too deep down the landing. And Quick little reminder, the weather situation is very, very difficult right now. We have unfortunately got some heavy wind gusts up there and still with some slight snowfall on the course. We're doing our best trying to get this done for sure. And so far so good, I would say the speed problem is definitely not a real problem. I think the the biggest problem is the visibility probably for all the riders, but still we're making the best of it. We made the best with the shapers of Motolino Crew trying to color the jumps and the kicker for this big air. Athletes are trying to ride down the best possible way. All right, and next up, who do we have, Alessia? From, from France is Garandel Liam. All right, the first yeah, French rider. If you're watching live stream from home, please, guys, give a big uh, hands up for these athletes riding down. They might not hear your voice. They might not hear your support. But we need you from home to show some support to, the, to these riders. Definitely. They are throwing down hard. We've already had an amazing qualification round number one from the women and the heat number one of the men went down earlier today. Gotta say we had a little bit better conditions there, but let's see if Liam Garondel has what it takes to put it down in his first run. Going for backside rotation. Looking for the backside 1260. Oh! Nearly. Ah, almost, so almost putting it down. Very unfortunate for the Frenchman, but still nice try from the young Frenchman, trying the, this, this backside 12 with the Weddle grab. Almost had it, but just over-rotating a little bit and going for that classic penguin slide, as we all know and love it. 
We got a 40, 43 riders coming up with, with, uh, all together in these two run in these two hits. Sorry, guys. Messed it up now. Jurmu Erik from Finland riding down. Here we go. One of the up and coming riders from Finland going for a switch backside. 1260. Wow. Whips it around right at the end. And I think he was quite lucky because there was a heavy wind gust just approaching after he landed. Big respect once again to all the riders. They are fighting these intense conditions. Mother Nature is not being an easy one today, but we are still rocking it super hard right now. I love it. Now ready to ride. It's Ikinose Kaito from Japan. He was riding yesterday, guessing t-shirt. Oh my God, yeah, that was the t-shirt guy, for real. Today, not in a t-shirt. Going for a fr whoa, front side. That was stylish. Oh my goodness, going for the front side, 1800. Oh my gosh. I don't know if he was looking for the front side 14 or the front side 18. Maybe he just got lost in the air right there. And he is gonna get medical attention immediately right now. Yeah, straight away. Oh we have got my some gosh. help coming in. That was a heavy one. If he put that one down, I would have been very, very impressed. I mean, a frontside 1800, that is no joke, I tell you this much. But he went for it in round number one, and we had kind of a similar situation yesterday in the finals for, uh, pardon me, the day before yesterday uh, on Wednesday. On Tuesday? Tuesday? Yeah, we're Tuesday. missing some yeah. of the days, but it was Tuesday, exactly. the finals for slow science. And we had this similar situation where somebody went down and we had the medical <laughs> attention that was needed. Uh, if any of you guys wonder if something happened to the guy, he is totally fine. He took a scan of his head and there is no internal bleeding, so he is all fine. His parents even texted me and told me that he is fine, so glad to hear that he is alright. And things like these happen as you see just now these riders I mean they're facing difficult conditions obviously but in the end the rider himself chooses if he wants to go for a heavy trick or if he is gonna keep it safe and the young Japanese rider Kaito Ignose definitely went for it but unfortunately not able to put it down properly yeah, before, at the end of the first um, qualification with the ladies and, uh, and the first heat of the boys, me and JJ were discussing about, with him as a professional athlete, we were discussing about how hard it is to keep focus on what you want to do with such difficult weather condition. I was curious and, and I asked, asked him about, based on his experience, what is the best thing to do when you concentrate and you focus on a trick you want to do at the start point and then you have to face some difficult condition. If you have to keep focusing on the trick you had in mind or if it's worth trying to change it while it's riding down and feeling the wind, but it's completely hard. I mean, when you focus, you might need to just be able to understand what the conditions are and modify that before when you start and you give up and you give in all that you can so that your mind can stay focused on the trick you want to do without getting scared on the weather and on the condition. Of course, it is not easy. It is super easy for me to comment it from here, from our announcing cabin. It is not so easy when you are there riding down, but that's most of you will understand it as riders, as people of the snow park might understand how hard it is. Usually in this condition, you might just stay comfy at home and not train, or you just give up staying in the park. But with a world championship happening on course, you want to give your best, absolutely. Of course, this might be tricky because if you have something in mind and then the weather changes, you're still heading to get the best possible score to make sure you get a spot on the final. But still, as JJ was saying, it is important for the guys to as, uh, either put down a good run, but also to make it safe. It's up to them. We know these are the youngsters, but they also have coaches helping them finding out what's the best solution. So we're pretty sure they are focusing on whatever they're doing. And then we're talking about extreme sports. Therefore, there's a margin it's for normal. danger. And uh, if we want to say that there's, there's something about that that uh, people have, that these riders have to face as well. But let's For stay sure. safe, no worries. Okay. This is it. Medical has got into the run. 
helping Kaito move from the landing. All right. This is the doctor helping him. Helping him. Big and, shout out to yeah. the medical team as well. Even, you know, like the conditions are not only hard for the riders. I mean, the conditions are hard for everyone up here on the mountain. We are all trying to do our best to get the best possible competition happening today. And it's even very hard for the doctors as well. Of course, they're trying their best. They're moving him to the side, making sure that he's out of the danger zone. Yeah, as we said, there's adrenaline coming down, rushing down the body. So it might be that when they land so badly, they just need a few minutes to relax and make sure they are taking the breath back. I mean, as we said, it's adrenaline thing, so sure. this can happen, guys. And if you're watching from home, once again, don't you worry. There are the medicals helping him, so don't worry about the images. Everything will be fine. Absolutely, he's in good hands. Now, okay. on to the next one. Ryushin Kono from Japan. Next Japanese rider facing these heavy, heavy conditions. Definitely not going to be an easy part for him. Going for it. Now, what does he... Have in round number one, going for a backside rotation, backside 1260, almost puts it down, backside 1260 with the melon grab, but unfortunately not getting the speed quite dialed. As I said before, we have heavy wind gusts going on today on the mountain, so all the riders are facing very hard times, but they're doing their best trying to get something done today. Just one thing to say, to be thankful for, there's also a lot of organization around the, uh, the race. We know you might focus on the riders, but me as part of the organizing team, I want to thank you, to thank very much everyone involved uh, in uh, into the competition, trying to make the best to give these guys this once in a lifetime opportunity to compete in the world championship. Everything is based on some uh, team consideration, not only from uh, the organizing team, but as well as with the coaches. So if they realize and they connect and they, they make sure that uh, it, it can be a safe run, they are going to do it. I know that from home, looking at this, it looks a bit worse than it is. But if they decided to put it down, then it's because there, there are the bases to put it down. And I want to thank as well the television team, the live stream, because they are there in the middle of the wind trying to help us out, me, Jonas, you guys from home, as well as the judges, to make sure that the images come clear and there's a proper judgment of those difficult runs. So I want to express my gratefulness to all of them making this event happen. Even though the conditions today are not as at their best, still there are people working in the middle of the wind, making sure you guys from home can enjoy the show today, the show, the event, the sports event. It is unfortunately you see Mottolino in these conditions. It has been a pretty good winter up to now, but there's something we cannot ask for, and it's the weather situation. We couldn't order for we couldn't order sun. Some yeah. of you tried the sun dance, but unfortunately <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it didn't work, work that, in that way we wanted. <laughs> so there's nothing we can do about it other than trying to make all the efforts that are necessary to put up a bit of the show that we were waiting for. Exactly. I also want to thank all the guys at Motolino. Everyone in here has been trying to do their best, even working a bit longer, making sure that we all receive, for example, food or some hot tea being here up the mountain.
bit softer than it used to be a couple days ago. So at least that's a positive thing that we can take from this heavy weather. But of course, we would love to have a little bit of a better weather situation. Niklas Suke already back on his feet. And yeah, it is definitely not an easy time right now for all the riders in the Stargate. I hope we do can uh, continue these qualifications and get the things done that we have to do today. Otherwise, maybe there is a way around it. I hope that we have an alternative if there would be no qualifications today, at least for heat number two and three. For now, next up, we're gonna have from Switzerland, Reef Hosler. One of the young up-and-comers from Switzerland. And I'm curious to see what he is gonna put down. He's gonna go for a frontside rotation, probably frontside 1080. Look at wow. that, okay. That was clean, that was good. Very nicely done from Reef Hosler. Perfect frontside 1080 with the melon grab. And you know, in conditions like these, I talked about it a lot already, I know, but still, I have to say it. The more experienced riders, they gonna think about the strategy. How do you want to approach a competition like this with heavy weather? Maybe try and go for a little bit of a safe trick. Of course, there's always a possibility of getting caught in a wind gust or getting caught on the takeoff, catching an edge, things like these. Is, it's always possible that it happens, but it definitely is worth it to go for a little bit of a safe run in heavy conditions. Now, from Korea, Donghan Khan. Here we go. Dong Hoon on course, going for a frontside rotation as well. Frontside, whoa, oh, frontside double 14. That was good, oh. I mean, that was the snow. I'm he was sure. He almost had that one and just getting caught in the landing by that fresh snow, as you said. Oh my goodness, very, very heavy. I wasn't expecting him to actually whip that one around to 14. I was, I thought he was going for a 1080 right there in the beginning, but still whips it around into a 14. Now we got to have Reimer Neko from Canada. Here we go, Neko on course for his first attempt, going for the backside 1080 double cork, but just a little too far down the landing getting pushed by the wind it's very tough of course and like this these wind gusts the, the speed is so unpredictable it is definitely a very very tough condition right now for all the riders but there is still the chance of putting something down we've seen a couple of riders already putting things down so it is still possible to actually prove that this weather is still rideable. Here we go. Next Swiss boy, Leo Saraiva, and he is pumped, going for a cab rotation, going cab 900. That was a very nice decision. Look at that, cab 900. He is very happy with that one. I know for a fact that he was going for a safe rotation in that first run, putting down a cab nine just to get a score. And then he's gonna go for a cap 12 in round number two. And next up, Alessia, who is it gonna be? Come on, I see the blue jacket. I see you, Nicola. I feel you. Come on. I know it's hard, but give it a try. Give your best. Come on, Nicola Galli from Livigno, not only from Italy. Come on. Local give your boy. best. Yes, you rock. Come on, Here Nicola. We go. Forza, Nicola. Nicola dropping in, switch, I suppose. Going for a switch backside, 1260. It's short. Oh, a little bit short, very unfortunate for Nicola, but still a very nice try on the switch backside, 1260. I believe there was a heavy wind gust just approaching when he was on the jump. So actually, a lot of respect goes from me, goes to Nicola for still going for that switch backside, 1260, and he almost even had it. And next up from Spain, we have Unai Lopez Sousa dropping in for his first attempt <laughs> of two. Going for a backside rotation. Backside double cork 10. Ooh, that was a close one. A little bit of a butt check landing right there, touching 
the snow with his butt. That is gonna be deducted by the judges, of course. But still, a nice attempt on a backside double ten. And next up now, it's gonna go back to back to back. We have from Belgium. Peter Seliot dropping in on his first run for the second lead, number three. Going for, oh, cap 1080, I believe. Unfortunately, not quite able to put it down properly on that first run. Next up. Is yeah. gonna be Aaron Wagner, Wagner, another Swiss boy. Shout out to Swiss snowboard team. Here we go, Aaron Wagner. Does he have the mental strength and the consistency to put something down here today? Going for a backside, double cork 10, puts it down, let's go! Aaron Wagner with a backside double 1080, putting it down perfectly. No hand drag, perfect landing, Aaron Wagner. Big up. So viel Respekt für dich, junger Mann. Backside Double Ten in so einem Wetterverhältnis. Oh mein Gott. <laughs> Heavy. Heavy things. I love it when you put down some uh, switch, switch to Dutch. Switch to Dutch, yes, of course. I gotta, gotta hype up my Swiss boys out here for sure. That's what you can do when you have the microphone. But anyway, we're we still go. cheering up for everyone. everyone. From Germany, Mika Theodor Schweitzer. Here we go, young German rider. Getting ready for his first run, going for a frontside rotation. Ooh, getting caught on the takeoff, but saves it very, very properly right there. Oh, he's gonna be disappointed, of course. That is normal. That happens sometimes. But I'm glad, glad to see that Mika was able to save that one as properly as he did. Mika Schweitzer still has a second run, so don't lose hope, Mika. I hope you are still hyped to compete in second run. Next up from Australia. Oh, a difficult name once again. Zephyr Whitelow Holmes. Here we go. Dropping. Australian Ripper dropping in for his first run. Going for a backside rotation. Backside. 900. Oh, a little revert right there. That's gonna be deducted by the judges, but I like the approach that Zephyr just took there. Taking it easy on run number one, just trying to put something down. That is definitely a good strategy for all the riders. Just try and put a clean one down and see where things go from there. Now back to Germany with Damian Millinger. Oh, Keep. and this young guy, I've been actually stalking him on Instagram. I've been looking at his Instagram edits and he has been making some insane progress this season. I've seen a lot of triple corks, nice 1440s. What's it gonna be on run number one? Going for a switch backside rotation. Switch backside double cork 1260. But as I maybe seen it correctly, he almost had a little issue on that takeoff, but still puts it down. Going for a switch back 12 in conditions like these. I was, respect. A, I was appreciating the hug at the end of the course, oh, which yeah. shows everyone that... Everybody's hyping each other up and that's exactly. what it's all about. Just keeping that hype real, trying to stay positive, even though the weather is very, very tough right now. And now we should oh, have a course... Uh, another for... Swiss boy! Oh my goodness! Lost the focus, getting back on okay. course. It's gonna be Geronimo Wieninger. I think he's gonna go back up, refocus, and then drop in for his first run. That's a good plan. Mm -hmm. Right there. Was a little bit too excited. Dropped a little bit too early. Mm -hmm. I definitely can relate for that one. Waiting at the start gate is always a little bit hectic. And you just wanna drop as soon as possible. And Jerry right there just dropping a little bit too early. Yeah, when you feel the course is ready for you, then you wanna, yeah. you wanna go inside. Especially when you have weather like this and you know that there's a, a weather window where it is possible to actually try and put something down and get something going. You want to just drop as soon as possible and of course you got to wait for the judges because if the judges are not ready it doesn't matter what trick you throw down. Back to focus, of course, Geronimo Vinegar. Here we go, Swiss rider on course going for a backside. Oh, straight air, yeah. That's actually a good idea. 
I think he wasn't quite focused right there. But that's okay. Things like these happen and for that exact reason we have two runs. We have Sweden on course. Just take a look at the top top of the riders oh, yeah. point. Sweden is Swedish there. Swedish flag right yeah, there. Yeah, it is in here. Where are all the watchers from? Show us your flag. Now on course, Tomoyoshi Nohiri from Japan. Dropping in Tomoyoshi for his first run. Going for a backside. Double cork 1080. Nicely done. A little bit of a hand drag in the landing, but still putting it down. Nice and easy. Once again, it is worth it to go for a safe trick in that first round and just try to put something down today because the weather condition is very, very tough. So definitely a good approach right there by the young Japanese rider. And next up from Norway, who's it going to be? It's Kjorstad Alexander Somme. Here we go. Alex dropping in for his first run. Is he gonna go for a frontside rotation? Yes, he is going for a frontside 720. Wow. And he is able to put it down, frontside 720 with the tail grab. Of course, once again, the weather is very tough for all the riders. I am, I have a lot of respect for all of these youngsters still going at it, still trying to put something down. And let's see if the young Belgium rider, Oliver van den Driesche, is able to put something down in these harsh conditions today. All right, I think the judges are ready. Let's see what's it gonna be for Oliver in his first run. Here we go, on course. Going for a backside double cork. Oh, oh backside double 10 attempt. But unfortunately, it looked like it was a little bit more of a 1260 axis right there. I hope he's all right. He's, he's on his feet again, that's for sure. So nothing really bad happened, I think. I hope he can shake it off and go for it in round number two. Next up, from Poland. From Poland, we have Kozarski Viktor ready to drop in. All right. Going for run number one, Viktor. Young Polish rider going for a backside. Backside double cork 10. Oh, that was so close. A little bit too much off axis right there. Couldn't get that weight back on his board properly and thus not quite landing it as clean as he was looking to do it, but still. Once again, he has another run. Now from Finland, Piri Pozio. Here we go, Piri. Getting ready. One of the other Finnish up and coming riders going for a backside. Backside 1260. Oh. And again, it is such, such a pity to see. Like all of these riders are almost landing their best tricks, but just. A little bit is missing. They are a little bit too energetic on that takeoff and it is so hard to find that perfect middle path of balance for for riders like these. Like they're so young, it's so hard, I guess, for them to find that middle path, that perfect balance of being hyped but still being focused. Let's see if the next Finnish rider has the perfect focus. Denis Larkiala. On course, going for a frontside rotation. Frontside, 1080. Ooh, okay. He got it. He kind of got it. I mean, in weather conditions like this, this definitely counts as a storm for sure. Frontside, yeah. double, sorry, not frontside, double. Frontside, 1080 with the melon grab, putting it down, going deep down in that landing. And actually, I don't want to talk too soon, but it looks like the wind is being a little bit more consistent, which is actually helpful for the riders so they can at least have a reference point of how fast they need to go. Before we had a little bit more of a wind gust situation, which is way harder to to choose your speed from. And next up, from France. Now, Oya Portier Ocaniva. Not a proper French name, but still 
from France. Actually, it's super nice name, I would say. Yeah. Naoya on course for his first run, going front side. Front side 1080. Ah! Oh! It is so close. Everybody is so close to landing their perfect run, but just this tiny little bit of focus is just missing this confidence of really putting down that trick. These last couple riders, almost, everybody almost had that perfect landing, but still this little tiny bit of confidence is missing. Let's hope that Wojtek Horki from Czech Republic has the focus that it needs, the confidence to put it down, going backside, backside 900, and he puts it down. down. There we go. Yeah. We have another landed run. Love to see it from Czech Republic, putting it down nice and solid. Backside 900, maybe not the most difficult trick. Probably not gonna get that high of a score, but still it is nice to put something down in that first round. Next up, again, from Czech Republic, Samuel Weigl on course for his first run, going for a safety run, a little straight air action with the Weddle grab. Also respectable, for sure, it is very, very tough. For all of the riders, of course. Next up in the start gate. It should be from Norway, Steen Alstrom Oliver. All right, let's wish Oliver the best of luck and the best of confidence to put something down in this first round of qualification. Oliver Steen Alstrom on course. Here we go. Looking for a frontside rotation, going frontside 1080, and he puts it down. Perfect me, landing, yeah. actually. Very nicely done from Oliver. Frontside 1080 with the melon grab. Very nicely done. I am stoked for this youngster that he was able to put it down right there. Now back to Italy with Valentino Tuzetti on course now. Forza Valentino, come on, Rocket. All right, next Italian Ripper on course, Valentino. Going for a backside 1080. Oh, that was so close. Valentino almost putting down that backside 1080 with the melon grab. It was looking so good in the air. Grabbed on to the board, locked in, but then just a little bit too much on that back foot in the landing, thus not able to put it down properly. But once again, all the riders have two runs, so I am certain and I really, really wish him the best of luck for round number two, the young Italian. He is going to make it for sure. And now we move back to Sweden with Linus Frey getting ready to drop in. All for right. round number one. We still have 10 riders for their first round on course. And then we're gonna move straight ahead to the second round, thanks. Here we go. Frey Linus dropping in for his first run of today. Little Manuel in the in run now going for a backside rotation. Backside 360, but just sitting down in that landing. Not, actually, not quite sure what was going on right there. If he just couldn't see the landing properly. Of course, it is very, very hard right now for all the riders. The wind is blowing super hard. And next up, we have another Italian rider. Forza Rocco Moresi, beep number 45. Come on, Rocco, put it down. Here we go for his first run, Rocco. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my god, that was the best save I've seen today. Oof. Rocco giving me a heart attack right now. Oh my goodness. Just... Slipping out on the takeoff right there. Wow. I just lost it for a minute. Yeah. I just lost the thing that happened. That was very, very unpleasant to watch. Rocco just... Maybe just blacking out a little bit right there and just losing his focus. But glad that he saved it so well, he's all right. Next up from Great Britain, Ethan Owen on course for his first run of two, going for a frontside rotation. 
Front set 720 a little too deep down that landing. And it is very hard right now to put things down, especially in the landing where there's a lot of new and fresh snow lying there. A lot of holes and bumps, I suggest, or I think in in that landing for sure. Next up from Belgium, who's it gonna be? Sverre Dickmans ready to drop in. First round for him. Here 2010, so he's a 13 years old. Just okay. keep this in mind. 13 years young, going for the big jump, just doing a safety run, going for a straight air. Maybe the best idea, especially in conditions like these, always a good thing to stay safe rather than to go for something that could get you injured. Next up, from Sweden. We have Mille Karmstrong. Going for his first run, Mille. Looking for a frontside rotation, going frontside, double 900, wow, and he puts it perfecto. down. With a little claim as well. Putting his fist up in the air, he is hyped to land that one, and I definitely can relate on that one must feel amazing to put something down in conditions that we have right now. It is very tough, very, very hard to put something down. And he just did a perfect frontside double underflip. I love to see it. Actually, frontside double underflip was my first double cork that I've learned. So glad to see that this trick is still out there. Next up from Sweden, Max Holmlund. Dropping in for his first run, going front side. Front side 720 it, yeah. with the Weddle grab. Kinda landed it, but then a little washed out on his way down the landing. I think the judges, I don't want to talk for the judges, of course, but in my opinion, that still counts as a landed front side 720. But the final say is still with the judges. Of Next course up. it is. It's just that we're. Watching just like you are from home, so some of these considerations need to yeah, be done on the course, situation. Of course. Now, the last rider from it, number two, he's going to be from Sweden, Olofsson Kalle. Here we go. And now we've got a run, an entire run for it, number two. So that's the last rider from heat number two? Yes, it okay, is. Okay, perfectly. We already have one run done for heat number two when Kalle is landing this run here we go mr olofsson going for a backside 720 oh just a little too short right there not quite able to put things down very unfortunate for him but at least you know what at least i'm very happy that we could have could just put one round through heat number two is already done with their first attempt of two and that is at least something. And we gotta close even the first round for heat number three with Mosfeld Mans from Sweden. There we go, Mans is getting ready. Dropping in. Pretty sure there must be some Swedish on course cheering up for him. I hope so. Mans going frontside. Frontside 1080. Oh, I was so close to landing it. Frontside 1080 with the Weddle grab, but just couldn't quite wrap it around in the end right there. And now we are back to the top of the start list and we're gonna start it off with Brooklyn the Priest. Actually, I think we missed out on Brooklyn in run number one, if I'm not 100% Yeah, we mistaken. were not online yet. I think we missed a couple of riders. That's my bad. I'm really sorry for you guys watching from home. But still now we are in round number two for the priest Brooklyn from the United States of America. Okay, so Brooklyn is still sitting pretty comfortable right now with a 83 even sitting in second place so far. So currently qualified, but there's an entire field of riders that still has a chance to put something down in this second run. So Brooklyn the Priest definitely looking to improve his score a little bit at least. 83 is still a pretty decent score already for Brooklyn. So now 
What's it gonna be for the youngster from the United States of America? Going for a backside triple. Backside triple 14, but just a little too short on that rotation. But honestly, a lot of respect for this youngster for going for a triple cork in conditions like these. He'll give you the Very, yeah. very tough conditions and still goes for a triple flip, which is very technical. Eli Bouchard from Canada with bib number two ready to drop in his second run. Here we go from heat number two. Currently also sitting in second place. Going for a backside double 14. Wow, oh, wow. wow. Oh, my goodness. Actually, I didn't know that he had that trick. That was the first time I actually saw him do that trick, if I'm not mistaken. Eli Bouchard going for... A back double 14 in run number two, and that is definitely going to improve his score, in my opinion. Currently sitting in second place with an 80 point even. So putting one down in round number two. Next up, we have Rocco Jameson from New Zealand. Kiwi Ripper currently in the pole position from heat number three. Going, oh, going frontside 14 with the tuck knee grab. Tweaking his knee behind his back on that rotation. I love to see it with that style. Jamie, Jameson Rocco, a style machine if I've ever seen one, that's for sure. New Zealand is producing so many good youngsters. I, I love to see it actually. Yeah. And the next one as well, Shema Mazet Brown, if I'm not totally yeah, mistaken, yeah. is gonna correct. be the next one. Yeah, it is. These New Zealand kids, they definitely are having a good time in the European winter. And they're super stylish as well. As you well, yeah. Great, great it is true. It, it is true. Yeah. A lot of good riding coming from New Zealand. Now let's see if Chema Mazet Brown, currently in the pole position for heat number two with a 95. Will he try something or, you know, he's going to chill. That is, a, that is actually a good idea. Just... Just chilling because he already has a 95. I mean, there's only a five possible more points. So I don't think that is necessary for him to improve his score. So nicely done, Chema, putting it down in that first run with a cap, double 14. And next up from the Ukraine, who is it going to be? Dmitro Lukin from Ukraine. All right. He, he did a really good job on the slope style. Oh yeah, he did. He, he did, did actually. So Dimitro now trying his best on that big air jump, going backside well, double twelve, and he puts it good. down. That, that's a very good. That one. was a perfect backside double twelve with the stalefish grab as well. Very difficult grab, and I am very glad to see that even in round number two we have improvement going on next up for france we have liam garondel getting ready here we go dropping in for his second attempt going for a backside backside 1260 and he puts it down oh my gosh i can't describe how hard that one was for him. I mean, he squeezed it around in the last second and was landing even nose heavy, but was able to hold on to that landing. That is body control, that is board control. Wow, I am so impressed right now. Eric Chirmu from Finland. Here we go, the next rider, next Finnish rider already had a beautiful switch backside 1260 and now just goes for a gangster front side 180 little styler action right there he already is sitting in fourth position so currently qualified with an 80 point even and i believe that switch backside 1260 is his best trick at the moment so he didn't felt the need to try anything to risk anything crazy so Nicely done. Now cheering up and ready to start. It is from Norway, Niklas Suke. Here we go. Niklas Suke has yet landed a run in this qualification. Now going for a frontside rotation. Frontside 
double 1260 and he puts it down come on Niklas Suke absolutely wild on the course going for that double cork 1260 and that I I mean he definitely earned my respect right there going down on run number one very harshly and then coming back in run number two and putting down a double 12 that needs a lot of a lot of uh, bravery right there Shout out to Niklas Suke putting it down in round number two. Love to see it. Now, Kono Ryushin from Japan ready to drop in on his second run. Here we go, Japanese represent. Dropping in. What's it gonna be in his second attempt? Going for a backside. Backside 1260, but just a little too far down the landing was looking for that double cork 1260 rotation but just over rotating a little bit going deeper than expected unfortunate for the young Japanese rider but let's see if Korea has what it takes to get into the finals Dong Hoon Kang for his second attempt here we go going front side once again front side double 14 oh come on Oh, that was looking so good right there. But once again, just a little bit too much. A little bit too much rotation. Couldn't put down that toe edge to stop the rotation properly. And next up from Switzerland, Reef Hosler. Currently in the bubble spot. Needs to put something down here. He is hyped. I think he's going to go for a front set 14. Going front set. One, two, three. Oh, and that was a broken board if I ever seen one. Broke his tail. Oh my goodness. Was it? I saw. I am pretty. Yeah, yeah, his something. tail is broken. Yeah. Oh my god. Holy moly. Reef going for it. Was it too much speed or was yeah, it? Yeah, definitely it too, too much? much speed. He went super far down the landing. I mean, the trick looked very, very good, but just. A little bit too much on that back foot, which ended up actually breaking his tail of the board. Fortunately, only his board got broken and he is still healthy. He is now walking up to get his lenses, which he also lost in that landing. But also, once again, a lot of respect to the youngster from Switzerland. He didn't... I think he only landed that from 14 twice or three times before. And he still, he knows it, he still has to put in some work on that axis. This axis is still very tough to put down. But respect to Reef for trying that front side 14 with the melon grab. Keeping it real, trying to send it in run number two. And now, I guess, for Reef, the waiting game is on. He is in the bubble spot, so he... The only thing he can do is uh, wait and see if he is going to make it into the final. And next up, again from Switzerland, Leonardo Saraiva. Mr. Saraiva getting ready for his second run. Currently sitting in seventh place. He Come is on. hyped. That's and it. I know he wants that cap 1260. Going for it. Going cap 1080, actually. Oh. Okay, he was hyped. He tried to put it down. Even though he couldn't land it, I am glad that he went for it, even in these harsh conditions. Once again, all of these riders, no matter the nation, they all have my deepest respect for putting on a show right now. Next up from Canada, Nico Reimer, trying to put it down, going for a backside rotation, backside double 10, but ah, oh, just not quite able to put that one down. Actually, I think there was a switchback set rotation, so switchback double 10. But unfortunately for him, not able to put it down in run number two. Next up, trying his luck, trying his best performance is going to be Unai Lopez Sosa from Spain. Here we go. Trying the backside rotation again, going for a backside double 10 with the indie grab wow. and puts it down with proper proper style backside double 1080 with the indie grab as well okay now getting ready on course 
Come on, from Livigno. Oh yeah, you're a local boy. Come on, it's Nicola Galli getting ready to drop in his second run. Getting hyped right now for the local from Livigno, Nicola Galli. A big up for you, Nicola. Come Big-o. on, bro. Yeah. Come on, Nicola. You got this. Last time he dropped, he had a little bit of a wind gust going on, but Come on. if he See has the focus. focus. He definitely has what it takes to get into the final. Dropping in switch, going for the switch back set rotation again. Switch back set 12. Oh! No! Nicola! Oh, that was so close. He was going for it. He f- you can see it in that landing. He went for that switch back set 1260. He drove his toe edge into the snow, trying to stop the rotation as good as possible, but just too much force right there. And then not able to land it properly. Nicola Galli, either way, you killed it. In these conditions, going for such a hard trick, that takes a lot of courage and... We appreciate a, lo- a lot it of anyway. respect. A lot of respect. Bravo, Nicola! You were super. Anyway, we yes. love you. Keep going. Keep trying. Next Aaron up. Wagner from Switzerland. Let's go. Another Swiss rider. Aaron Wagner, dropping in for a second round. Going backside. Oh, that's gonna go big. Oh, backside double twelve. Attempt from Aaron Wagner. Couldn't quite put it down right there. Aaron actually is currently sitting in the bubble spot, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he is. Aron with a 71.33, currently sitting in that bubble spot in place number five. So he tried to improve his score, but unfortunately not able to put down that back double 12. And next up from Belgium, who do we have, Alessia? Peters Elliot, ready for his second run. Here we go. On course, I believe going for a cab rotation, going Captain Adrian puts it down this time. Elliot Peters able to put one down in today's very, very heavy conditions. Once again, to every single rider, I don't care if you don't want to hear it anymore. I have respect for all of you. You deserve my respect. In weather like these, to still put it down, it is absolutely amazing to see. The, the future of snowboarding is looking so damn bright and I love to see it. Yeah, we need to repeat that because the show is on thanks to them. They're facing bad Absolutely. weather conditions. They're still going for it. They're still giving us the show to watch. So let's be thankful once again. Now from Australia, Zephyr Whitelow Holmes. Here we go, Zephyr. Dropping in for his second run. Went for a backside 900 in run number one. Going for a backside 1080. Oh, but... Just couldn't quite get that access, that energy that was needed for the back 10. Not able to put it down properly in that second run. But still, once again, respect also for you, Zephyr. Y'all are putting on a show and it is heavy right now. The wind is blowing very hard and you guys are still putting on a show. I absolutely love to see it. That's the spirit. Keep on pushing it. Even in hard times like these, that's the most important times actually where you have to push through and actually show the courage that you have and the passion that you have for this sport as well. Let's see if the next guy has what it takes. Geronimo Winninger, a.k.a. Jerry, getting ready for his second run. Is that correct, actually? I think first we have Schweizer Mika Theodor Paul from Germany. Yeah, I think you're right. As we're switching to the hit number three. Here we are, Mika Schweizer aus Deutschland from Germany. Outside the announcer cabins, people from Motorino, the Shaper's crew is working to make sure everything is under control, helping the television set up, make sure that you guys from home can watch the live stream safely, not safely, but brightly. With good quality, best quality possible, possible that's yeah. for sure. Mika Schweitzer current, currently in the 20th position. So couldn't put it down in his first run. Now he is looking to land this run to get a chance to cracking into that top five position. 
definitely not the easiest task right now for Mika Schweitzer. The pressure is going to be on. Yeah. And now it is even more important to get that mental focus, get into that golden balance of being hyped and being focused. What's good is this is that now we are in the middle of the second run, so most of the athletes have had a, have had a second chance to make the most out of their runs. So condition might be changing, but I think we can make it down to the last ones and finish off with the first two heats with the last two hits of the snowboard qualification. Yes, you know, I'm actually glad that we already came this far and I believe we will be able to get this qualification done in a proper way as it has been scheduled, which is gonna be very, very nice for all the women and men of the snowboard category. Yeah. Definitely looking forward to the next rider, Mika Schweitzer from Germany. It's gonna be a pressure cooker situation for Mika for sure. He needs to put something down if he wants a chance to get into the next round, get into the grande finale of the Junior World Championship finale. Big Air, last competition of the Junior Worlds today, this year in Livigno, Mottolino. I'm looking forward to it actually. It's gonna be very tight up there. Yeah, we hope the weather situation is about is going to change in the next couple of days. Unfortunately, it is so unpredictable. We've had such a good season up to now. We didn't really deserve such a thing during the World Championship. Not for us, not for the juniors, not for anyone. But still, as we've said so many times, we cannot control that. If you are at home and wondering where we are, we are in Italy, in the north of Italy. We are in Livigno. This is our destination, which is about to give out 78 medals during the Olympics in 2026. We're going to host the most important freestyle and snowboard competition, basically all of them in the slope style, in the ski cross, ski cross border cross, half pipe, aerials, moguls, basically everything that has to do with freestyle sports. So Livigno is absolutely amazed to be able to try out some of these events that will be the most important ones during Milano Cortina 2026. Just keep the name in mind, Livigno as the freestyle destination. And uh, most of that also Mottolino Snow Park, which is the place we are now, the place where our shapers put up an amazing setup either for the slope style in the past days and today as well for the big year. But this is not a temporary setup. This is what you guys can find if you come and meet us here in Mottolino during the season. We still have 28 days ahead of us. We're gonna close the 28th of April. The park is not gonna go, is not gonna go down until we get close to the end of the season. So if you guys watching from home wondering if there's a possibility for you to ride the park, just know that you all have it until the 28th of April. We are here. So if you wanna give it a go and wanna give it a try, see for yourself how it looks like, you're more than welcome to join us here in Mottolino. And I can highly suggest that. As a professional rider, the park, from my eyes, it looks amazing. The jumps and the rails look fantastic. So it's definitely gonna be a good time. If you are a freestyle enthusiast, they have small jumps, big jumps, and super big jumps, whatever your heart desires. And yeah, so it's definitely worth it to, to come by and check out Livigno for sure. Yeah, we didn't have that, that many of international events in the past years. We've always worked on the World, World Rookie Tour in January. Then we had a few Europe Cups in the past, not a few, but maybe five or six. But still, this is after some years, we've had the Parking European Open in the past. We've had so many great events, and now we're back on world level event with the Junior World Championship, heading towards other World Cup event in the next year. And of course, the we would say the cherry on the cake in Italia, but I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, in, uh, it does, it does. Does it make sense? Yeah, the cherry on the that. cake with the Olympics in a couple of years from now? It's gonna be a big show, that's for sure. So better be ready. That is what it's gonna be. Yeah. 
If you guys watching from home, you might join us on uh, the social media at Motolino Snow Park so that we can tell you more about what we are going uh, to offer you in the future. There are some great, great news coming ahead of us in the next year, of, uh, especially. There are some important changes that we will announce as soon as we are ready with that, but we're planning and working on it. So a few important changes, and it's really crucial that you follow us on our social media if you want to stay tuned and follow what's happening here in Motorino. We're going to have an incredible summer of things to do. Get ready for the Olympics in 2026, making the most out of that. And not only the snow park is not temporary in this situation, but it's not going to be temporary or it's not going to be just something that comes up for the Olympics. Motorino has been believing in the snow sports, in the winter sports, since forever, basically, since when snowboarding were, was considered a sport for outsiders. I remember someone here in the company was saying that snowboarders would ruin the slopes. So let's, get, let's give them the park so that they don't slide and ruin the slopes for the skiers. So can you believe how much time it has gone by since then? But Motolino has always worked on snow parks and on creating the best possible situation for the movement that then turned also in the free ski movement. And uh, now we are, it's basically in our DNA, so we're not going to end this project with the Olympics. We will keep going on with that. And what will come up with the Olympic in a couple of years will just be a new basis for new future projects that we will continue to offer you guys from the snowboarding community watching us live and for this youngster one riding today in our snow park. Definitely looking forward to that as well. I think I can say that in this stream that is definitely also one of my goals to be part of the Olympics in 2026 out here in Livigno Motolino. And now back to snowboard action we have Mika Schweizer dropping in for his second run going front side looking way better than in run number one going for that I think it was a cap 1080 actually oh <laughs> getting caught in the powder <laughs> look at that he is hyped on that one he, he wanted it to just cheer up at the end oh of this amazing let's run. go Mika Schweizer with a cap 1080 with the tail grab styling it out tweaking it in the air and then fully stomping it and that's going to be a great score actually for him i think that maybe even give him the chance to crack into that top five position currently he is sitting in the 20th position so definitely going to improve on his score but the final say as i said so often is going to be with the judges and now from Switzerland. Ooh, I don't think no, we're no, gonna no. have. So yeah, we yeah. should have Vinny. Get, no, he's from he's the a DNS. DNS. Yes, he is not riding anymore, Geronimo. I hope he's all right. Next up, we have Alexander Kjorstad from Norway going for a frontside double ten. Insane axis, but oh my goodness, going down very hard, catching his nose right there, but. He seems to be all right. Damn, these young kids, they are just built different. Crazy to see uh, Alexander going for that frontside double cork 1080. Almost brought it around. It was really, really, really close. Just a little bit more pop or a little bit more amplitude, a little bit more speed, and then he definitely would have had that one. Unfortunate for the youngster but still a nice show anyways next up who do we have we have millinger damian getting ready from germany oh and this is gonna be very interesting as well once again millinger damian is sitting in sixth place as you can see right now so he Could needs go. to put in some work to get into that top five position the top five of each heat so from heat number one heat number two and heat number three top five riders will advance into the grande finale and if Damien wants to be a part of it wants a part of the cake he needs to step it up right now in his second run the current weather situation is definitely not the easiest 
but Damien Millinger already had an insane season. As I said before, I've been a little bit of a stalker and checked him out on Instagram and he put in the work and the hours in his training sessions to improve his snowboarding skills and now he's on course for a second run, going for a backside rotation. Backside double 1260, no. but Damien Millinger going down on that backside double 12 with Stalefish not able to improve his score very unfortunate for the youngster oh my goodness and Mika Schweitzer the German from before almost had it to crack into the top five with a 72.33 so not quite able to get into the final spot Bubble spot still hold, held by Reef Hosler from Switzerland. Next up from Poland we have... Kozarski Viktor getting ready for his second run. Maybe a few minutes wait. No, he's ready. Okay, Definitely. I think he's ready. I'm glad to see that all the riders are eager to, to drop as soon as possible. I mean, of course, that's always the goal to get this thing done especially in conditions like these we want to get this competition through as fast as possible but the wind of course always very challenging no matter the talent of the rider no matter the skill of the rider it is always very hard to ride in conditions like these okay okay seems Luca is saying yes Okay. Okay. Here we go. Luca Rodigari cheering up with the athlete. Clapping, giving him the go. Viktor Kozarski dropping in for his second attempt to get a spot in the final. Going for a backside double ten. Will he get it? Oh, Nearly. so close. Victor, you can see it in his body language. He was like, oh, I know how close that was. He almost had it and oh boy, I can relate so much to this feeling on these backside rotations when you land on that heel edge and it's just this tiny little bit of energy that is missing to make it onto the board fully. It is very depressing, but still a nice show. And next up we have Tomoyoshi Nojiri from Japan going for his second attempt. Oh, backside 720, but then maybe just not getting the airtime he was looking for. I believe he was looking for a backside double 1080, but not quite able to put that thing down. Going for a backside 720, keeping it safe, which is nice to see the risk management from these youngsters definitely on point so far. Next up. From Finland, Dennis Larkiala. Here we go, young Finnish rider on course, going for a frontside rotation. Ooh, frontside 180, I think he got caught in a wind gust right there. Once again, the winds are picking up a little bit right there. Getting more intense than it was before, which is not easy, of course. We are still in the midst of the snowboard heat number two and three qualifications and I think we're actually slowly but surely getting to it the is, end yeah. of it we're getting closer there are still uh, 10 athletes for heat number three and less as we had some DNS all right in uh, heat number two but yeah I would say 15 more to go pretty much okay yeah, don't count them one by one it might be a bit more but still here are the current standings for heat number three. Currently the bubble spot holder still Mr. Reef Hosler. I can't believe it. This seems to be the Swiss Swiss team's uh, thing right now. Yeah. I remember in the Corvach World Cup, uh, Nicolas Huber, also one of the Swiss team riders, he was in the bubble spot in the World Cup for the whole of the second run of qualification. Did he made it at the and end? He, he, in the end, he made it in the finals, which was amazing. But I think he he didn't have any hairs left on his head. He <laughs> was so, so, and his wife as well. She told me she was so nervous she couldn't even look at the riding anymore. She was way too nervous. But uh, I don't know. It seems like the bubble spot is where the Swiss people feel the most comfortable at yeah, the moment. Yeah, it is. It's funny. It is. 
How is it? Is it just in uh, heat number three or also number two? I cannot uh, remember. Actually, I heat think two. also in heat number two we have... Yes, you're right. Yeah, also Wagner, Aaron. Aaron. Boys, come on. What is happening here? <laughs> the bubble boys from Switzerland. <laughs> come on, man. Well, if I they mean, make it to the finals, it's gonna be then nice. I'm going to call them bubble boys at yeah, the end. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's go. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I'm gonna be at the dinner with them tonight and I'm gonna call them Bubble Boys. The anyways. Bubble Boys, yeah, yeah exactly. For sure. Okay. So now we're getting ready. I guess it's Van der Driesche Oliver from Belgium, the one getting ready Most at likely. the start point. Yeah. I think the guy with the red jacket is the coach of the Netherlands and the Belgium, Belgium team. So we're gonna have him in a little bit. Oh, look at it. The course looks amazing. I don't know if you can try and understand how steep it is with the nets wooden down. For safety reasons, you can might see how steep it is. Yeah, this is like the actually landing. one of the things that I love most about the Motolino Snow Park is the landings of the jumps are always so steep, which is very comfortable to to put on new tricks. And it's actually like the impact of the landing is so smooth, like almost no impact, which is perfect to learn to learn new tricks let's see if oliver van den Driesche is able to put down run number two going backside double ten going That's deep good. and he puts it down oh my goodness this is gonna be very tight right now holy moly he is putting it down like it is nothing right now backside double cork 1080 all the way down to the bottom that was Definitely an improvement. And now back to the Czech athlete, Wojtek Horky. Here we go. Wojtek getting ready for his second run, dropping in, going for a backside double 10. Oh, that was so close. Just putting down that hand a little bit. Oh, very, very tough landing right there. Super unfortunate, just not quite able to put that one down properly. Very, very unfortunate for the youngster. Okay, now apparently the wind yeah. is, a bit, is blowing a bit far. Wind is picking up, unfortunately. A little bit harder than before. And we should have on course ready to drop in Pozio Piri, who's been doing a great, I, I, can, I don't know why I relate to him so, but I remember he did a some great runs into the slope side. For sure, yeah. I think I remember him as well, also in the difficult conditions we had in the slope style yeah. qualification. He was able to put down a run, which was absolutely amazing. Incredible, incredible. <laughs> yeah, I got my, my fellow mate here. <laughs> Finding out, we oh shouldn't have had a live scoring with us at the moment, guys. <laughs> this we've, live scoring is yeah, killing me right we've now. We've been announcing without live scoring, just keeping for ourselves the surprises, oh and today God. we've got it. So you can imagine what JJ it, is it about. It is crazy. Yeah. I'm nervous as hell right now. But let's see what the Finnish ripper Piri Posio has in store for us. Definitely has the chance to put it down. Oh, oh come on! Almost. Backside double 12 with the melon. Oh, you can see it. He knows it, how close it was. Oh, that was so close to yeah. be a very, very strong run right there. Very unfortunate, but I'm looking forward to see more of this youngster in the future. Definitely going to be out there for a long time. Next up from Norway, who's it going to be, Alessia? Sin Alström Oliver. Mr. Alstrom on course, going for a frontside rotation, frontside 1080 Mellon. Oh. It was right there. Oh my goodness. My nerves are killing me right now. It is just every rider that is dropping down right now. It is 99% there, but just that last little percent is missing. Oh, I can relate so much to all of these guys. It is very, very hard right now. But still, I am glad to see that all of these riders are still willing to put something down, try to go for their hardest tricks possible. And next up, who is going to try we, to do that? We're going to have from France, Bordier Okaniva Naoya. Naoya going for it in his second run. Here we go. 
Going front side, front side 1080. Oh, come on. So close once again, just going a little bit too deep down that landing. And I don't wanna don't wanna be the guy, but I think it's just this this wind is is so hard to decipher and to actually manage your speed correctly. Yeah. And I definitely hope that the next guy is putting it down. Frey Linnes from Sweden. Come on boy, you got this. Show me what you got and put it down. Going for a backside rotation, backside. 720, let's go. We got another landed run and that makes me so happy. Young Swedish rider with a backside 720 melon grab, putting it down in round number two. Let's freaking go. Now, if I'm not wrong, that that is the suit of Samuel Fagel from Czech Republic. Here we go, next Czech rider. Samuel on course with the red outfit, the red lightning on course, going for a frontside rotation. Frontside, oh, frontside 900, just missing that pop on the takeoff. A little bit too late on that rotation. Unfortunately for Samuel, not able to squeeze it around in the end. I think he was looking for that frontside 1080 rotation, so was looking for half of a rotation more than he actually did. Very unfortunate, but still nice riding. Next up, we have Ethan Owen from Great Britain, giving his second chance a go, his second run. Going for a frontside rotation, frontside 900. Oh, Once again, super close to landing this one. And I have to say frontside 900s, definitely the hardest 900 to land because it's a weird rotation that you come out of. You are most likely landing on the heel edge. And next up, I'm gonna shut my mouth. You can cheer him on. Come on from Italy, Valentino Tuzetti. Have a second run. Come on, Valentino. Let's go, Valentino. I believe in you. You got this. Going for backside. Backside 720 and oh. he is able to put it down. Maybe not the ideal run he was looking for, but still, I mean, look at, the, look at these flags and the snow. The conditions are so freaking hard right now and just putting something down, you got my respect. Even going over the jump, you got my respect. Now on to Sweden, Mille Karström. Getting ready for his second run. Swedish team is being coached by the legend Niklas Matson, one of my all-time favorite snowboarders. Glad to see him as the team coach. Now Mille on course, going for a frontside. Double ten. That oh, was close. that was close. Mille. Oh, it was way too close. Almost putting down that frontside double ten. It was looking very nice up until that last second. Just a little bit too much airtime right there. If he would have just popped it a little bit lighter, maybe he would have been able. But next up, Rocco. Come on, uh, come on, Rocco Moresi. Now on for your second run. Here we go. I really Focus, hope that he yeah. is going to put it down. Yes, looking way better already. Going frontside 1080 and he puts it down. Rocco Moresi going for frontside 1080 melon grab and putting it down in that second run. Once again, Rocco, you have my deepest respect. That was definitely one hell of a show. Now we are on. We are at the end of hit number two, and we should uh, we should have Olofsson Kale. So he's gonna close. He's gonna end the second the hit number two. Sorry, guys, with the second okay. round. Okay. So actually, at this point, I have to say I'm very glad that all of the riders are okay. And even though we had a little crash from the young Japanese rider, I am most certain that he is going to be attended by medical staff, which we maybe have some information in a little bit. But next up, let's take a look at Kalle Olofsson for his last attempt of today. Last rider for heat number two. Going for a backside rotation, backside. Whoa, backside 720 with a stylish weddle grab. Tweaking that nose grab, uh, sorry, that weddle grab. Tweaking his nose to the maximum doing some yoga in the air. I love to see it. And now I believe we have one of the youngest riders in yeah, the start field. Yes, Dickmann Svere 
But as we've seen in the free ski, it doesn't matter the age you are. We've been doesn't talking, matter, yeah. We've been talking yesterday about the fact that you might be lighter than the other ones that might be a few years older than you, but still you can H, make it. Therefore, go Svere. Age is just a number. Show them what you got, Svere. Round number two, going, ooh, I think that was a straight air, I believe. Mm -hmm. He was just a little bit out of his head, maybe. And, you know, of course, I definitely understand it being so young. That is definitely not an easy task in conditions like these with winds blowing so hard. Very, very tough. So still, also, Svere has my respect for jumping over the big boy jump and trying to make something happen today. Maybe not his best performance, but still, I am glad that he went for it. We should have, of course, ready to drop in Holmlund Max, and then we go to Musfeld Mans so that we can end even eat number three. Just a short update, that he, because you were talking about him before. The doctor just sent a text into the organizational committee and saying that Kaito is conscious and stable, just getting down to get checked, but okay. after the crash, he's okay, which is one Perfect. of the most important things for everyone we love to hear watching that. from home. So the crash that we've seen in the beginning from Kaito, the boy is already on his way to being checked up in the hospital. He is conscious, he is stable, so definitely nothing bad going on over there. We definitely send all the healing vibes to Kaito and wish him a speedy recovery at this point. And let's hope that the next rider is able to put it down, I think from Sweden you said, right, Max? Yeah, it's Holmlund Max from right. Sweden getting ready to drop him. So two more riders in the start gate and then we definitely had one hell of a day oh my goodness already now shout out to all the riders also once again shout out to the riders from heat number one and to all the women of today it was such a tough day and i can relate to all of you that's for sure and i am very glad to see that you guys are still putting on a show it was absolutely amazing to watch you guys snowboard, to watch you guys rip and have the best fun possible. And yeah, just my deepest respect to all of the riders in the start field, for sure. Yeah, and from the organization committee, I have to say thank you for being able to allow us to put up the show that we've been waiting for since a couple of months. We ordered everything, flags, banners, we ordered the we put up this we set up the kickers and the raids and whatever was needed the only thing we couldn't manage is to have the sunshine bright as it has been on tuesday because it actually yeah. exists it actually exists on monday if you sorry it or not. yeah it exists on Livigno, over livigno unfortunately we caught a difficult week but still guys that's how it goes sometimes exactly winter sports we've okay. been saying this now back to the course back to action Sweden. max Holmlund from Sweden, second to last rider, going for a frontside rotation. Frontside, oh, looking for the frontside 1080 with the Weddle grab, but not quite able to get it done in his last attempt. And now we have the Most last rider. Yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to no interrupt worries, you. No worries. It was Mos it is Mosfeld Mans from Sweden as well. Once again, the Swedish are closing out this snowboard qualification. Mans getting ready for his last chance. Maybe let's take a look at their current ranks. Mans is currently sitting in 18th place with a 13 even. So definitely room for improvement. Maybe he will be able to He's crack into the top five. Let's see what he has in store. Going front side, front side, front side to 80, but oh, Nailed it. almost had it. A little bit of a tail manual landing, tail drag landing, not quite able to put it down, but he's all right. He is happy with his riding. I believe he was looking at the camera up there 
And ladies and gentlemen, that was it for today's qualification action. Even though the weather was very difficult and very harsh to us today, these are the current standings. And the Bubble Boys are still on it. On it, exactly. Reed Hostler, the last one to make it into the finals. Eric Jurmo, place number four. Brooklyn the Priest, your current junior world champion in slope style, actually. And in second place, Dimitro Lukin. And first place, Rocco Jamieson from New Zealand. These are your top five qualifiers from heat number three. Maybe we can see heat number two as well, if possible. And we're just going to look at our, exactly. our own screen. So in heat number two, the top five qualifiers also from Switzerland. In place number five, we have Aaron Wagner. In place number four from Norway, Niklas Suke. Very stoked actually to see Niklas in that fourth place because he went down very hard on his first run and he was able to recover mentally so well that he actually made it into fourth place. So qualifying for finals. In place number three, we have Unai Lopez Sousa from Spain. Happy to see the youngster from Spain in finals as well. And in second place, Eli Bouchard from Canada. Ripper, always very good on his feet. And in the first place, Shema Mezit Brown, my mate from New Zealand. Absolutely love this final field. And I can't wait to see what they're sending in the finals. Let's go, boys. Yeah, let's go, boys. And uh, we'll see the, we will see each other for the finals for snowboarding on Saturday, whilst tomorrow it's the free ski qualification. So if you want to join some uh, freestyle community guys that watching from home, please join us tomorrow for the free ski qualification. If not, we'll see on Saturday morning. Keep posted on uh, our social medias to see how the program might be changing due to this not so nice weather situation. We might change it a bit, but stay tuned with us. We're going to communicate it as soon as possible. Stay tuned. I'll see you. Thank you, JJ, for your company. It has been such a great pleasure today as well. It is my pleasure as always. And I hope to see all of you tomorrow once again in the stream for free ski action. I think the schedule is pretty much the same as we had it today. So quarter past 10, we're going to start it off with women and heat number one of the men's free ski. See you tomorrow and have a great day. Ciao. Bye-bye.